Hey guys, I'm Erin Kate. I'm a UX designer based out of Denver, Colorado. In this video today, I will be walking you through my very first portfolio website for UX design. So this is the website that essentially landed me my first job during my bootcamp. I began Career Foundry's UX design bootcamp in January of 2021. By May of 2021, under six months, I had landed my first UX design job. Now this course was meant to take eight months working part-time, but I truly treated the course like a full-time job and I had successfully gotten through about three fourths of the course in two to three months, I want to say. By the month of April, so four months, I was already applying to jobs. I was working through the job application section of Career Foundry's course. And by May 10th of 2021, I had accepted my job offer with my first company that I worked for. When I was creating my portfolio website, I was looking at like a lot of designers that were about a year or two further in their career than I was, obviously out of boot camp, and were working their first or second UX design jobs. And so I would go and study their portfolio websites and even like look at their resumes and stuff because in my mind, I would think, okay, if that's what got them their first job, then I'm gonna replicate something similar in my own style to get my first job. As I walk you through my website, I will point out where I've done like a couple minor edits, but all in all, the case studies you'll find in there, the styling of it is all original from about April of 2021 because that's when I got my portfolio website up and running and I really haven't edited it or done anything to it. I'm really excited to get in here, be completely transparent and walk you guys through my very first portfolio website. Let's do it. I talked a bit about creating your portfolio website in my most previous video, which is all about streamlining your UX design job application process. If you guys are there right now, like that's kind of where you're at in your journey, definitely check that video out. I even spent some time doing a walkthrough of how to create your portfolio website. That would definitely be worthwhile, I think, for anyone that needs some inspiration or motivation to take the big leap of creating their portfolio website in addition to this video. My website domain is erinkateuxui.com. Really simple, essentially telling them who I am and what I do. When you pull up my website, the first thing you see on my landing page is a little bio of myself and a picture of myself. I noticed that this was a very popular trend on UX design websites, was to like have like a hello, Erin Kate is a UX and product designer living and playing in Denver, Colorado. That was very common. Web developers would be like, hello, Samantha is a web developer living in San Francisco. And so I decided to kind of follow that trend because I thought that it was cute and fun and created rapport. That's also why I included my face on right on my landing page so that right when this website was pulled up, people would see me and they would see what I do. That's where I'll point out that's been changed since I first started. When I first created my bio, I believe it was Erin Kate is a UX designer living and exploring across the United States because at that time I was living kind of nomadically <laughs> when I was making my website and I didn't want to pin myself to one location because I was applying for jobs in multiple cities. Now, right when you scroll down, this is the first thing that I'll mention that I added and it's kind of the only main change that I've made to my portfolio website. I added this little animated block that says before you scroll and that I essentially haven't updated this website. When I ended my first job in December of 2021, I wanted to get right into applying for new jobs before updating my whole portfolio website. I was going to Portugal and I had planned to take that time to update my website, but I wanted to apply for jobs before everything kind of closed down for the holiday season. Nothing ever like fully closes down, but I just knew that I wanted to get out there and get my portfolio and resume out there before things slowed down. For that reason, I put this little block here with a link to a portfolio PDF. When you're a new designer and you're trying to get your first job, I highly, highly, highly recommend having a portfolio website. This example on my website of my portfolio PDF is essentially just like a list of some of my favorite projects from my first job with Figma file links to prototypes. And that worked for me to get my second job. I actually got my second job like a week after I ended my first job and it just was very easy and smooth and I think it was just all destined and aligned. That being said, if I hadn't gotten that job right away, I would have updated this whole website with those new case studies and projects. But as a new designer landing your first job, absolutely create a portfolio website. Like that is 100% my advice. I think it's a great way to also just practice like working on something big for yourself. It's a great way to showcase your style and your personality. And that's always a plus too because some companies do take into account culture and they wanna know if you're gonna be a good fit on their design team. I believe that that was a benefit of my website for my first job was that my website showcased my personality a bit and the other designers knew that I would probably work well with them. When we scroll past that little added block, right on my landing page are my four main case studies. My styling is pretty like subtle and the only thing I coded onto this website was this little white border around my case study images and my whole entire website 
I did like some CSS code that I Google searched and I used Squarespace to create my website. In my previous video, all about streamlining your job application process, when I covered creating the website, I talked about a couple different platforms you can use to host your portfolio website, but I went with Squarespace as I had previous Squarespace experience and I just love the templates. They're so easy to use. That's the only thing that I coded on this website was that white border. Otherwise, Squarespace had my back. I will get into my case studies here in a moment, but I wanna stress the overarching importance of the way that I have my website set up. My landing page introduces myself and introduces my work. I could have my website simply be my landing page. I did add other sections, other tabs, but it could just be this main landing page. And then, you know, link. I do recommend having your landing page include a little bit about you and a bit about your work because hiring managers, recruiters, they are on your website for such a limited amount of time and they just wanna have one big scroll and get a good idea of if they wanna dig deeper into your website. At the very bottom of my website, so the footer, I have my UX design email that I had chosen. And then on the right hand bottom corner, I have a link to my LinkedIn profile and my Behance profile. Now I'll jump into my case studies. I'm not gonna deep dive into each case study right now because this is more of just a walkthrough of my portfolio website. However, if you are interested in a whole entire video all about case studies and how to format them, how to set them up, drop a comment below. But for this video, I'm just gonna take you through each case study and more so explain the thought process behind why I chose to present that case study in my first portfolio website. When I go to my work tab, I have the four case studies that are also on my landing page like populate down or drop down. And I'll start with Clio. So Clio is the app that I created for my bootcamp. I created a couple apps for my bootcamp, but this is the one that I chose to do a full case study and display on because it's the project that I was the most excited about. I just have this big header image of the mockups for my app, and it just gives a really good first glance idea of what this app is about, and it can get people excited so that they wanna keep scrolling and reading. The way I set up my case studies is essentially to introduce it via an image and then a question. So how might we design an app to modernize esoteric self-discovery techniques and connect people with trusted experts? And a little like tidbit about the app. People are interested and this is why I decided to do an app for this topic. Then I have on the right hand side my role and the scope and the process and the tools that I used. Here I have another scroll through of the different screens that I've mocked up for the app. And as I'm looking at it, I'm excited that I get to show you guys this because I think that something that really helped me land my first job so fast was all of my visuals. I'm a very visual person and I'm learning more and more that many people are very visual. So including all of these visuals, I just think was really beneficial and did help my success. Even after this little like mock through scroll, I have a video. So this is a little like YouTube video of me walking people through the app and giving an overview. This is something as well that I think has really helped me in my job application process I will do like video walkthroughs of the things I've created and I've noticed that hiring managers really appreciate that and they seem to like it and I think it is a really good way to showcase without a bunch of text your thought process as a designer because that is what hiring managers are looking for is your thought process it's not so much about your experience for some job roles it's more so that your thinking is on target that you're thinking like a designer so that's how i you know was able to really showcase my thought process was through that video that i have here then I have the problem. So I stated my problem. And like I said, you guys can go on my website, read read like the more in-depth overview of this app. But I stated my problem and then I moved into my research. I used color blocking to divide these different sections of my case study. I think that that was a really good move as well. Not super strong, different colors. I could have. My website style is a bit more subdued and a bit more, you know, monochromatic, but you could use red, blue, whatever colors. I wouldn't make it obnoxious because you don't want to distract from your case study. That's a little side note on the styling of your website. I chose to go more subdued and monochromatic so that my case studies could shine instead of my website itself. I didn't want to distract people from my portfolio projects. I wanted my portfolio projects to take front and center on the stage instead of the styling of my website. Good thing to keep in mind for a new designer is let your portfolio pieces shine through. Your website is not where you want to express tons of creativity. It's more so in your portfolio projects. Keep it practical, keep it simple. That's really how I approach it. So there is my competitive analysis, user surveys and interviews. I included more visuals, so some pie charts here to give people a more visual understanding of the user survey takeaways. Does the person reading this really care about what my research found? Not necessarily. The person reading this, the hiring manager reading this is going to care that I was able to create a visual chart from the data I collected. That's more so what they're seeing. And I think what they're more so really going to see here is that I was able 
able to extract numerical data from my research. Card sorts and affinity mapping. When you're in boot camp, they'll take you through all of these different design steps, but this was just essentially me showcasing that I had done this work, that I knew how to do this work, and if they wanted to dig deeper, the hiring manager could see how I went about it and the conclusions I drew from my card sorts and affinity mapping. Then it's the fun part is all of the um, user personas and their task flows and journeys. And then another tactic that I used during my case studies was to, you know, and change up my text using italics and bold and bigger text versus smaller text to highlight the more important findings of my research and my design process. These are my avatars, user personas, their stories, their flows. And as you flip through, you can see more in depth what each of these are. And then exploration and ideation, information architecture and wireframes. So I displayed my very first wireframes for the app that I had created. I went into it, my thought process behind it, added a little bit of styling. And this is a flow that I created from my initial wireframes. I would say these are more mid-level wireframes. I performed some usability testing and sh shared my findings as well as the process I used used for usability testing. I did show some cool like spreadsheet usability test results. I think that that's kind of cool because you know it's all color coded and everything and it just essentially builds more authority for me as a designer that I know what I'm doing, I'm digging deep into the process, I'm not afraid to spend time on the little things that aren't just the pretty visuals but the little things that build up into the big thing. And then this is when I move into kind of like the outro of my case study and also like the peak of my case study, like the climax of my case study and that this is where I talk about the rebrand, the final rebrand and the different modes, the dark mode and light mode that I created for accessibility. I give more of these mock-up flip throughs. Here's my light mode. That was something that I will say I did on purpose for my first portfolio website. I created in this case study, both light and dark mode. I just felt like that was a way to showcase my creativity as well as my empathy and awareness towards accessibility because light and dark mode are something that I think we take for granted. But if you look at really familiar apps and really successful apps like Kindle, for instance, there's a light and a dark mode. And then here I have the link to my Figma file for the style guide that I created for the UI of the app. And then at the very end of my case study, I do a, like a review or reflection on what that project taught me. I'll dip into Collab and Color Agency. So Collab and Color was a PR and influencer agency that I helped to co-found and it actually wasn't like a purely UX based project but I am a big proponent of using your past experience so whether you were a teacher or you did marketing or you were a journalist using that experience and drawing up a UX story from that before UX design was ever a technology based term or a technology based career it was found in all sorts of things I think a lot of boot camps teach about the story of UX design of like creating a cup of tea how you take the lid off the kettle and put the water in the kettle and put the kettle on the stove top and put the lid on the kettle and turn the flame on and then the water boils and then you steep your tea. UX design is found in all aspects of our life. It's not just in the technology world. So that's why I think that being a new designer, I wanted to highlight my experience in the real world of UX design because I didn't have years of technology UX design experience. This is something that I just intuitively did and brainstormed and went with, but it helped to fill my portfolio website quickly I think it allowed my website to showcase my work in a more holistic way. I think a lot of portfolio websites for designers straight out of boot camp have very similar projects. Being able to draw on past experience and craft a case study out of it is a really unique spin on a case study. Now that being said, my collab and color work was very marketing, branding, UI based work. It made it easier for me, but if you're like a teacher or you're even like a fitness instructor or something, you can talk and create a case study around how you applied UX design principles to formulate your classes, that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna take you in depth through this one since it's technically not UX design. But again, I have imagery, I have a video where I walk through some of the stuff I did. I did showcase the U, you know, the branding or UI that I did for the project. And I also tied in right here is the design thinking process, which is a very common educational image used in boot camps. And that was another creative way that I pulled in UX design into my process for branding and stuff. These are more examples of showcasing the UI work that I did, copywriting that I did for this project. 
this is just me scrolling through it for you guys. So when you look at this, it can give you some good inspiration of how to create a case study out of your previous experience if you're transitioning into UX design from a different career field. One of the projects from my boot camp was to create a language app. I'm an equestrian. I spent two decades working with horses. I love horses. When everyone else was doing like, you know, learn Spanish or learn French, I decided I'm gonna create an app for horse lingo. And that's what I call it was horse lingo because in the equestrian world, there's a lot of terminology that someone from outside the equestrian world would like look at you and be like, what are you talking about? For that reason, I decided that that would be another unique way to showcase my creative thinking while staying within the boundaries of typical project, like in language app. I created an app called Horse Lingo. I decided not to showcase that app because I only got to about mid fidelity wireframes. But what I did do for that project is I created this little mascot. And so I wanted to showcase like this mascot that I had created for Horse Lingo. And so I wrote like a story and once again, I did that strategically. UX design case studies are about storytelling. I wanted to storytell the creation of my mascot for horse lingo, and that's what I did here. Charlie's story begins in a virtual land where hopeful equestrians go to learn the lingo of the horse world. Oh, my app was called Horse Talk, not Horse Lingo. It was called the Horse Lingo at first, and now it's Horse Talk. The land is called Horse Talk, an equine terminology-based learning app full of all things whiskers, nay, hay, and hooves. I had a lot of fun with this project because I got to showcase my creativity in a really fun, like more primary way. You know, it almost reads like a children's book. I once again roped people in with an image of the final product, but then I went through the creation of that product. So I went through my thought process and my design process for that mascot, similar to the Clio app UX case study. Pen and ink. Here are my initial like wireframes for him. These were the onboarding screens for the app. Charlie and Pixel Perfection. Those were my like more mid fidelity or high fidelity um, wireframes for the onboarding screens. And then Charlie Horse had come to life. That was such a fun project. And I highly recommend once again, drawing upon your past experience. If you have any experience in graphic design or you have an interest in maybe getting a job that's more heavily UI design based, don't discount what you've done in the past. Go ahead and tell that story and really focus on your design thinking process and the different steps that you took to get from point A to point B. Now I'll take you to the very last little like my work section that I have. So it's not technically a case study, it's just illustrations. Here we are on my illustrations page and I have custom illustrations and stickers and logos. I had seen on other designers' websites that they did showcase their illustrations and they did showcase like their logos and their branding work. And I figured that even if I was applying for primarily UX design jobs, this would also build that rapport of showing my personality and being more open about my personality personality and you know I'm a bit more artistic and I like to spend time working on more creative projects so I just added that to my website to fill it up and add some more of that personal style. And these are just my little custom illustrations that I had worked on. These were some logos that I had created in the past. Now I'll take you to my resume page. To have this accessible resume PDF link that you can literally just click on and it pulls it up and you can download it to your computer. That is going to be really invaluable for you to have on your website because it's gonna make the process so much easier for hiring manager or recruiter to gather your information so they can go back and review it later. For instance, if if your resume was simply displayed on your website, but they couldn't save it to their computer unless they like maybe screenshotted it, I just feel like that creates another obstacle for them. So in a way, this is UX design in practice, putting this downloadable link. I also could have displayed it on this page. I just decided to go with the link because I wanted to prompt people to download and save my resume so that I could be, you know, added to that pool of applicants that were going to be reviewed later on. The last section I added, which I think that just about every website I've come across has this, is an about section. And the about section is just just where you get to continue creating that rapport and sharing that personal branding. You'll probably hear me talk a lot in my videos about personal branding when it comes to the job application process. And it's the idea of presenting yourself online as a designer. A way to stand out in the very competitive world of UX design is to brand yourself as a designer so that companies go to your page and they say, there's something different about this designer that's gonna fit my brand. Not every brand's gonna say that, not every company is gonna say that about you, but there will be the ones out there that really resonate with your style and resonate with what you're putting forward. So I think that the more that you can individualize yourself, the more that you can stand out and be competitive with the big pool of applicants that you are usually competing with for these job spots. That section is a fun place where you can get you know, a bit more personal and share a little bit more detail about yourself so that the people that are digging into your website, deciding if you'll be a good fit for their team, can really get to know you. Here, I just give a little bit of a bio and background on what led me into UX design, a little bit about my design thought process, and a little bit about me and what I like to do. These pictures are taken from my Instagram account. 
once again, showcasing my personality and what I really enjoy in life. You know, nature and I was a yoga and Pilates teacher before I was a UX designer. Love horses and that's me and my dog. And then down here at the bottom, this is also an area that I have updated. Obviously, when I originally had this website, it was as of April of 2021. I got this inspiration from a designer's website I came across and I thought it was a fun way to create a bit more interaction on your portfolio website. Obviously, you don't have to do this. I have not seen a lot of people like, you know, add links to books and those kinds of things, but I did want to add that. So that's a fun way to share a little bit more about your personality rather than just throwing it in a long text bio. You could also do an intro video. That would be a really awesome way to make yourself stand out and put yourself a little bit ahead of the game. I didn't think about doing that here, but that would be another great way to stand out in your portfolio website. To sum up this video, make your website simple, practical, and branded to you. Let your unique personality shine through in your website. Even though this is a professional website and you're using it to land a job, UX design is a creative career, so it does give you opportunity to flex your creativity a bit more within your website. If you want to keep your website really simple and you don't wanna you know, have to deal with different pages and stuff, you can just do a landing page with a little bit about you, a photo of yourself, and your case studies. Obviously, you'll have to make other pages where you go into more depth on those case studies. You can always go back and revise your website over and over and over again. My approach to your first portfolio website, done is better than perfect. I would definitely make sure that I add that resume downloadable link on your website. I think that's very important. I personally recommend putting an about section on your website. It's another common practice and it's another way to build rapport with a potential company. As I said earlier, I'll plan to create a video all about how to format your case studies to build out your first portfolio website. So my tips for this video are more focused on the overarching themes, which is personal branding, bio, showcase your work. Choose three to four case studies that you really like, showcase your work. If you feel like you don't have enough experience in design, draw upon your past experience and create a couple case studies of work you've done in the past where you applied UX design thinking to it and really focus on drawing the similarities between UX design in the tech world and UX design in the real world. To make it easier on yourself, choose to build your website on something like Squarespace or Wix where you can have a template and go from there and you don't have to worry about coding stuff yourself. As a UX designer, you really don't need to know front end code. In fact, people that are hiring for UX plus front end code usually are not paying as much as they should. So as a first time UX designer going out to get your first job, don't worry about coding a website. You can easily land a UX design job without coding experience. And last but not least, my biggest tip is to simply get started. I know that building a portfolio website can be like a really big obstacle. Here you've been doing your UX design studies, whether bootcamp or solo, and you've been working on UX projects, you've been learning UX tools, you've been learning all of these new things, and now you have to go build a website. And it's like all of a sudden, the track that you've been on and you've been putting so much effort and energy to, you feel like you have to put your energy into a new tool. And that can be really frustrating and intimidating. And then you go look at other people's websites and you get into the comparison mode. So only look at other designers' websites for inspiration. Don't compare. Just get inspired and get started. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it valuable, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in transitioning to the career of UX design, be sure to subscribe to my channel as I'll be posting new videos here every week to help you do just that. Bye.